Shabbat Shalom. There's a lady who's sure all that glitters is gold, and she's buying a stairway to heaven. Many Led Zeppelin fans here. I'm not. I'm not going to give a sermon about my, uh, you know, teenage uh, guitar dreams. But stairway to heaven. Of course, this famous passage from this week's Torah portion that. Sophie spoke about beautifully. Uh, we didn't coordinate what we we're going to talk about. Let's let me set the scene. I'll, I'll read the whole story. Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. Coming upon a certain place, he passed the night there, for the sun was setting. Taking one of the stones of the place, he made it his headrest as he lay down in that place. He dreamed. And lo, a stairway or a, a ladder was set up on the ground with its top reaching heaven. And lo, angels of God going up and coming down on it. And lo, the Eternal stood up above and said, I, the Eternal, am the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. The land on which you are lying I will give to you and to your descendants. And your descendants shall be like the dust of the earth. And you shall spread out to the west and the east and the north and the south. Through you and your descendants, all the families of the earth shall find blessing. And here I am with you. I will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this soil. I will not let you go. I will not let go of you as long as I, ha I have yet to do what I have promised you. Waking from his sleep, Jacob said, "Achen yesh Adonai b'makom hazeh ba'anochi lo yadati." Truly, the Eternal is in this place, and I did not know it. He was awestruck, and he said, "Ma nora hamakom hazeh enze ki im bet Elohim v'zeshar hashamayim." How awe-inspiring is this place? This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. We can spend all day talking about all different parts of this story. What is the stairway? What are the angels? What is this promise that God makes? But I want to talk about the reaction of Yaakov, the reaction of Jacob. Truly, Adonai is in this place, and I did not know it. So let's turn to Rashi, the great medieval commentator, and see what he has to say. Rashi asks, in our instance, what is this verse trying to convey? Why would Jacob say such a statement after such a dramatic dream? So he, his comment he puts in Jacob's voice, Truly Adonai is in this place, and I did not know it. For had I known, I would not have slept in such a holy place. What does this mean? I wouldn't have slept in such a holy place. I think Rashi is saying that to fully experience the holiness of a place, of course we don't need, we shouldn't fall asleep. We need to pay attention. We need to be present. Maybe this is a statement about falling asleep in shul. I don't know. With, with the, the heat off, we're not going to fall asleep. But what does it mean, fall asleep? Well, how often do we fall asleep at holy moments, at holy, in holy places? Maybe it's not only resting our head and closing our eyes. Maybe it is, well, this probably hasn't happened to any of you, but think about, have you been to a wedding? And people are experiencing the wedding with the intermediary of a phone? Are they fully awake? Don't worry, there's probably a professional photographer doing it for you. Wake up. Be present. Or maybe other times. Let's talk about shul. How often are we asleep just saying the words 
but not awake to allow something in the sea door to grab you, to hold on to you, to fully wake you up. The commentator, the medieval commentator, Ibn Ezra, carries, carries forward Rashi's point. He says, the point is that there are certain places on earth where miracles occur. Why they occur in those places is inexplicable. It's an extraordinary mystery. There are places that miracles occur, and yet we fall asleep. We're not awake. Maybe it's not just places or events. Maybe it's the people right in front of us. How often are we asleep when someone is right in front of us calling us help, for help? They need love. They need presence. God is there also, and we didn't know. So I'm going to turn to another commentator who talks about this verse, the great Hasidic Tzadik Menachem Mendel of of Kotz. He reads the Hebrew hyper-literally. Let me explain. There's a a slight grammatical... uh, anomaly in the sentence that if we translate it directly into English it would be truly Adonai is in this place and I I did not know Rabbi, Rabbi Splansky explained it that Jacob was kind of stumbling couldn't get his words out but Menachem Mendel takes it a little bit differently Jacob says I twice and since according to tradition no word in the Torah is a mistake so why do we have this redundancy? So Menachem Mendel suggests that the first I is Jacob's ego. Jacob is saying, God is in this place, and it is myself that I did not know. Meaning, when we are not filled with ourselves, the I, the ego, we can experience God. When we are not filled with ourselves... Humility is one of the greatest traits, say our sages. Humility, not being overcome with yourself, allows you to wake up. The great 19th century rabbi Yisrael Salanter writes, Do not be surprised how it can be that a person with all their faults and smallness of stature nevertheless considers themselves greater than their contemporaries. For the more a person loves being praised and admired, the more will their desire for praise grow and cover up their deficiencies to the point that a person no longer senses them. And as the desire to feel that they are better than others grows, their self-admiration heightens the sense of other people's shortcomings. By virtue of their arrogance, the person will no longer sense other people's virtues, and will eventually only be able to sense their own virtues and other people's deficiencies. And so, arrogance will come to fill their entire soul without their even sensing it. And when your entire soul is only filled with arrogance, you don't sense that God is around. You don't sense that others are around. And maybe, as Rashi would say, you are asleep. Another similar interpretation by a a contemporary David Elcott, the place where God was found was in the eye, the self of Jacob. Consumed with anger, fear, and deceit, Jacob suddenly becomes aware of the potential divinity within himself, the place where God can reside. This might seem the exact opposite of Menachem Mendel. Menachem Mendel says we need to empty our I-ness, our ego. And here we're saying, no, that maybe God is found within us. I think these are complementary interpretations. Nineteenth and early 20th century Rabbi Shimon Shkap writes, A person must must explain and accept the truth of the quality 
of their I, capital I, their ego. For with it, the statures of different people are differentiated, each according to their level. The entire I of a coarse and lowly person is restricted only to their substance and body. Above them is someone who feels that their I is a synthesis of body and soul, and above them is someone who can include in their I, in their self, all of their household and family. Someone who walks according to the way of God, the way of Torah, their eye includes the whole Jewish people, since in truth every Jewish person is only like a limb of the body of the nation of Israel. And there are more levels in this of a person who is whole, who can connect their soul to feel that all the world and worlds are their eye. And they themselves are only one small limb in all of creation. Then their self-love helps them love all of the Jewish people and even all of creation. When we see our selfness as being part of all creation, it allows others, other selves, to, to be a part of that. So our father Jacob woke up he experienced that he recognized that the ego that he had been building the years, the person he had become stealing birthrights, stealing blessings, needed to be humble. And then needed to be open to the whole universe, to others around him. And then he would realize that God is there. Shabbat Shalom.